Hi Leos, thank you for joining me and welcome to my channel. It's Farouche and this is your reading for the beginning of 2022. I'm excited to be back with you guys. Here's Smokey, the amethyst. Um, anyway, I hope you guys are doing well. Today we're covering four big transits that are affecting us at the beginning of the year. I'll do a tarot card reading for everyone and a card just fell. Let's see, where did it go? Oh, three of wands, okay. So you guys are looking forward to something, waiting for an answer on something possibly. Okay, we'll get into that in just a minute. Um, but I have four little things to mention. So if you want a reading with me, just go into the description. Um, my website's still down. I know what I'm doing. It's just a matter of putting it together. So uh, go and check that out. It's in the description down below. Second, um, if you want to leave a comment, today's not it. I'm turning off comments for the individual signed readings for this series. I just want to see how it goes. I feel like uh, some of you guys, you guys have my back. You definitely do. And you leave lots of comments. But I feel like maybe that's too much work for you guys. Like it burns you out. So we'll save it for like collective readings to leave comments or something. I have a bit of a cough with it, which is residual. I got really sick throughout December. Um, I have a predisposition to cough. I was sick a lot when I was a kid with a lot of like tonsillitis type things. And so um, I just cough really easily, even over like a cold day. So I'm not sick. I feel fine. That's a heads up. And members, there's an extended for you guys today. It's in the description and at the end of the video. Okay, so let's get into the transits that we should talk about. So for you this time is in this area of your chart. That area, it has a lot to do with putting yourself out there, you know, um, putting out your best foot forward, interacting with people in a meaningful way, maybe making a mark in your career to some extent. It's, it's you going out of your house and interacting with others. So imagine walking outside of your house and being like, hi neighbor, this is the energy of this area of the house. So what's out there? This is the little groundhog leaving its, its little burrow, right? Okay, so, so this is the area of the chart. It's not usually that the chart is divided like this, but it does happen. Some uh, Vedic astrologers believe that it's a very negative thing, that half of the zodiac, uh, especially when the nodes um, were, how do you say, well, they are now. So the nodes, uh, when all the planets, Ceres is an asteroid, are on one side of the nodes, it's considered in Vedic astrology a very bad omen. I'm not a Vedic astrologer. I'm a mishmash astrologer. Like everything else in my life, I, I, I bring things together, right? And I'm like, what's the best answer? What's the most positive answer? Look, you have even the two of cups. So don't look uh, to bad things. I think it'll be okay. Um, they may be right on some things, but I wouldn't be watching over my back. The main energy that we're dealing with at the end of December last year, because I didn't get to do these series last year, so we're doing it now um, as a big kind of beginning of 2022 reading. The nodes are switching between uh, Gemini and Sagittarius, where they were in the last year, and for the next year and a half, they will be in Taurus and Scorpio. This will happen until July 2023, and this is a significant switch because both Gemini and uh, Taurus have some reasoning for why they are the points, the highest points for the North Node. And so, and um, likewise, the South Node apparently is uh, in its highest uh, position in Sagittarius or in Scorpio, depending on who you talk to. We'll do a deep dive on most of these transits in separate videos, but I thought I would do an overview first because we haven't had a reading sign by sign in a while. So, uh, so suffice it to say the nodes are switching. And for you, that's significant because over the next year, you're going to be very focused on career. You're going to be very focused on building yourself in new directions and really going for it. Um, also, there will be a big purge with regard to your family issues. So, you know, we all have some degree of growing up 
problems, whether we come from a great family or not a great one. Uh, the fourth house, anything that has to do with residual problems with family, or if you've been in a relationship that was really difficult and you need to let go of some stuff, this transit in the fourth house will be a really good one. Uh, the fourth house is often associated with either the father or the mother, mother uh, depending on who you ask. So if you have issues with your parents, the south node transit, which only happens once every 18 years, is going to be really good for that. So a big release of things that, you know, need releasing. So let's take a look at what that means. This is just introductory energy, so don't take it as this is going to be my next year and a half. This is just to see what's going on. We're taking a probe. We're probing your 10th house. Then we have the Knight of Wands first. You're going to meet, need to move on something very quickly. I felt that right away. You see an opportunity. You see a breakthrough. You go after it. You know, you get her done. Then we have the Hierophant next, which is the card of Taurus. And so something is working. Something is clicking in your community, which is your 11th house right there. And it's facilitating for you an opportunity to go out, go after what you want, and so forth. The next energy is the Three of Swords. So whatever's been going on around you in your community, maybe this is the fourth house stuff, it's maybe somewhat hurtful or difficult. All this, or the sixth house stelium here with Venus going station right there. We'll talk about that next. But there's Pluto, Mercury, and and a lot of stuff. So this is December 19th when Venus went retrograde. We'll go back to that in a minute. But this Three of Swords can be in reference to your sixth house because sixth house can have some darker energies associated, some difficulties and challenges. And so um, in relation to groups of people, in relation to people helping you out, in relation to people uh, like how you relate to other people, how other people facilitate for you, strengthen the world, what they allow you to do and what they refuse to do for you. Three of Swords can be your disenchantment with how people have treated you in the past or how they have, uh, to what degree they have allowed you to do what you do, how they've burst your bubble, how they've been pessimistic, you know, in your progress. I don't feel like it's a one-on-one -on -one thing here. I think this Three of Swords really has to do with like, you were my best friend, you didn't help me kind of energy, or you were supposed to be my friends or family and you didn't give a crap. Something like that's going on. The next message is the Two of Swords, which is a decision. This is Moon in Libra. It doesn't have to, you don't have to have Moon in Libra for this to be relevant. And then we have the Knight of Pentacles. This is career stuff. So what that means to me in career is that you're separating yourself, continue to separate yourself from people that bring you down that are not nice and you get the sun which is your card i hope you see this a lot in 2022 it really looks as though it's a continual process for your sign to get away from people who burst your vibe you are a high vibe nice person who has good intentions towards others um, the reason you get that is that you wear your heart on your sleeve a bit much so when you're happy Everybody can see that. You're a fifth house baby. That's your house, the fifth house, which is the best house, in my opinion. And it's like children and happiness and love and passion, all these good things. And so as you are a bouncy, happy, I think of you guys as Tigger from Winnie the Pooh. So as you're bouncy, bouncy, happy, I'm like, uh, I think of your, your sign as kind of pissing people off by your happiness. So I think that's why you get it. I think that's why you get resistance from people who should be helping. And I think that at this time, you're going to distance yourself from that and, and seek out new opportunities. This is specifically with work. I think that's what it's talking about. Also, I feel like you're going to make a big move in a situation in which you're not clear. Two of Swords, you're not going to have all the information, but uh, Knight of Pentacles, very likely it's you. Also, the Sixth House is very supportive to you with this. There's a lot happening in your Sixth House. Whatever you're learning, whatever you're doing is a benefit to you. 
That was a bit of a rant, but hopefully that was a good one. Okay, so next transit that we want to talk about is Jupiter. Jupiter is entering into Pisces or has entered. It was on December 29th, so just a few days ago. You'll actually see that happen as I'm talking about it. It's entering your eighth house. I like Jupiter in the eighth. Jupiter in the eighth is a real speeding up of closure cycles. So things end on a much more fast pace. And when things end, it's sort of good luck. So the shortcoming of Jupiter in the eighth house, in my opinion, is that you get used to it. Jupiter moves into Aries on May uh, 2022, and you get used to getting something better when one thing ends, and you need to really watch yourself to not begin ending things when Jupiter's moved on into Aries. So pay attention. Jupiter is in Pisces until May, and then again between October and November as it retrogrades back into Pisces. And so what it's going to trigger for you is, you know, some things are going to come to an end, but when they come to an end, better things will arise. Um, what I'll say to that is we'll go deeper into it, but this is just your heads up intro. Okay. So let's pick some cards for Jupiter in the 8th house. So this has to do with work. Now, 8th house has to do with shared resources. So if you share a business with someone, this could be touching upon that. Jupiter brings expansion, so growth of shared equity is possible. So shared money with other people may grow. Two of Swords, which is Moon in Libra, and Queen of Pentacles, Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn, secondary transits, in water, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. You're waiting on an answer from someone, and I think this Queen of Pentacles has her guard up, so she's not sharing exactly as much as you need her to, or as much as you would like. So it's kind of frustrating. I see you working hard, and I see you not getting the full information. So maybe that's going to be an issue that arises in which you're waiting on someone to give you information. Queen of Pentacles, I'm a Virgo, can be very, very stubborn. It doesn't have to be a Virgo. It can be any sign, but she's just very resilient. If she gets her, uh, her heels dug into something, she doesn't move on that too much. We have the Knight of Swords. I see you as possibly uh, making a decision to move away from someone, someone who's not communicative, someone who's not putting in the work that you are. I could see you very much being like, okay, I'm bringing all this to you, but you're acting in a, uh, how do you say, untrustworthy way, or you're distrustful of me, and there's always this interpersonal problem that's egging things on, and I have to move on. I could see you being the Knight of Swords and just simply pulling away. Here is the next message is the seven of pentacles. A lot of this has to do with timing, waiting, timing, applying effort in the right direction, seeing what comes out of that. You do have a lot of tra transits in uh, January and February in Aquarius. And so what this actually means is that there's an emphasis on partnership and relationships. So through this time, you will in some way be working through who are you to me, who am I to you kind of stuff. And this can be on a romantic level, but it can be in a business environment or with someone with whom you're working or someone you depend on. So take your time with it. In other words, Knight of Pentacles, I really feel like you're going to be moving on to something. You're ready to do something while somebody isn't. And you're too close in a relationship with that person to the effect that it's slowing you down. So be aware of that, be mindful of that, and and when you feel the urge to move on, then move on if that's the appropriate response. Okay. Okay, so let's talk about Venus in uh, Capricorn retrograde. So there's two retrograde periods that are important for the next little while. So they will be affecting you, Leo, um, as all of us, and it's a huge part of the beginning of 2022. So for you, it has a lot to do with how you go about doing things. Venus retrograde means that the people that you interact with on a regular basis and the things you do on a regular basis will be revamped or get a new way of approaching them, which really fits in well 
with the rest of the messages that have you really breaking apart from circumstances that may be covertly working against your best interest or some other negativity, okay? So let's take a look at your cards for Venus retrograde in this area. It's in the sixth house and it begins on, it began on December 19th and will continue until January 28th, but it'll form conjunctions with Mars and it'll form conjunctions with, uh, with Mercury and Pluto, that's significant because Venus was conjunct Pluto in December from the 5th through, excuse me, from the 11th through the 25th. And so as Venus goes direct at the end of January, her and Mars will form a series of conjunctions in Capricorn and Aquarius. And so for you, a lot of interpersonal things, especially people you see on a regular basis, may actually turn out to be something very lucky and love for you when Venus forms a conjunction with Mars on, let me think, it's in, on no, February 8th is when they meet in Capricorn at 18 degrees, and March 4th through the 25th is when they will be in Aquarius going back and forth. And the reason for this is when Venus is retrograde, she's objectively moving slower. She's not actually moving slower than Mars. So in the sky or in our zodiac, it appears as though Mars is catching up to Venus from our perspective. And then she will fall back as she's moving slower. She's not actually moving slower and then move past Mars in March. And Venus and March do the Venus and Mars do this on a regular basis, this back and forth, probably where all the mythology comes from, uh, from their movement this way. We'll talk about Venus retrograde somewhere else. Suffice it to say, pay attention to what happens in the day to day. And then uh, something may evolve into more serious partnership. So we have the magician first. This to me always signifies initiative, meaning you're taking initiative, your, in, your initiative in something will be worth a lot. Anything to do with the sixth house, which is self-starting energy, you doing something, you applying yourself, you pulling the trigger on something and getting it going will be important. Then we have the strength card next. Again, we're getting strong self-starter energy. Of course, the strength card is your card, so this is you. So if you want something to happen, I'm picking up on the fact that there's probably some type of situation that you are involved in and it will take your persistence for it to happen. Now if you're not involved in anything, maybe it's a time for you to initiate, put yourself out there in some way, see what happens, you know, and good luck. The next message is the, what is this, Queen of Cups, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. I think somebody wants you to initiate. The Queen of Cups is very receptive, it's water and water. It doesn't have to be an, a water sign, but I feel like the ball is in your court in a relationship. So, um, you know, whether it's a romantic or not romantic relationship, whatever you have going on, the other person is probably waiting for you to initiate, waiting to you for you to get the ball rolling and say what you need to say. Then we have the hanged man, delays, again, period of waiting, period of you probably wondering why things are not moving ahead. It sucks, but it does look like the people around you expect you to put in the effort. And so sometimes that happens. You need to decide if that's something that you want, if it's temporary, if it's permanent. You know, there's a lot of questions around that that you need to figure out. We have the Seven of Cups and uh, the last card is a Hermit. This is the card of Virgo. A Virgo may be very helpful for you at this time. Um, maybe you're feeling as though there's a lack of clarity with regard to a situation you're involved in and you may actually choose to do things your own way. So step out of a situation for a time. I think that there's a feeling of cautiousness with regard to a situation that you're involved in, which makes you very want to take a step back, make sure that it's okay, 
and and uh, be cautious with it. So if there's a situation in front of you, be it love or, or something else, something to do with other people, you may feel as though this is not the best time to move forward because there's a lack of information, there's a lack of clarity, and you feel more safe just uh, doing your own thing for now. This may change in the future, but I feel like someone is being emotionally demanding, like a one-sided street sort of situation, maybe. So just take care of you. The big theme for you is take care of yourself and like push ahead. The North Node in Taurus is a very good transit for you. Actually, the whole North Node in Taurus all the way through North Node in Aries is going to be a really nice three-year period. So I would say be excited about that. One, uh, one retrograde here, we have actually uh, Mercury Station on January 14. That means when it objectively stops in our perception, it stops moving back or forth for a period of a day. And then it will begin to retrograde into Capricorn and then move direct on February 4th in Capricorn at 24 degrees, which is about where Pluto is, and, uh, and then move into Aquarius again. Um, definitely conversations with other people about where you stand with them. Conversations with your partner, if you have a partner. Um, conversations with, uh, you know, your work a partner if that's the situation but everything to do with you and others you will really want to talk about at this time and then um, something needs to be refined plus I feel as though there's a like a little bit of a change with regard to something close to you uh, something that you do on the day-to-day -day, something that you do on a regular basis day in day out you may want to change that or shift that so uh, this is maybe a time Mercury retrograde in which this happens. Mercury retrograde is complementing Venus retrograde right now because they're hovering between Aquarius and Capricorn. And since so many transits have happened in the last two years in Aquarius and Capricorn, this is a continuation of that energy. This to me is a resolving point for many people. So the beginning of this year, you're resolving relationships. Here is your descendant, whether you're a Leo rising or not, for whatever chart we're looking on. Aquarius is your descendant, which means that you attract Aquarian energy. It's your polar opposite. And so with transits going over the Capricorn Aquarius split, it's it's just refining who you've attracted into your life regardless of, of what sign they are and who they are to you and those sorts of things. Okay, so now let's take a look at Aquarius, excuse me, Mercury retrograde in Aquarius. If I have some messages for you for that, we have the wands, okay? Wands is a message, new beginning, new opportunity with work. Then we have the Ten of Wands. Lots of people getting that. There's a lot of like picking up the pieces and moving again, deciding to work moving forward and trying to push yourself forward. Uh, then we have the Seven of Cups. I feel like there's a little bit of a situation at the beginning of the year for Leo in which you're not clear on everything that's happening and yet there's a fair bit of initiative that's required from you so there's a little bit of you know it's snowing in front of me it's been snowing a lot and where i i know canada they think everything is snow but actually there's not much snow here and we've been getting snow for two weeks it's about to finish tomorrow but and then we're going to get our usual rain and it'll wash it away but right now there's like two feet of snow three feet of snow it's quite a lot it's been snowing every day and it, this situation, this Mercury retrograde, this energy for you reminds me of like, you know, when it snows and you can't see as far, so you, you can't see, especially at dusk, this is sort of the energy that you're in. Like you need to go forward in the snow, you need to get your things done, but you can't really see what's up ahead. So it's a feeling of eeriness. It's a feeling of what's going to happen. But I think, you know, one foot in front of the other and, and you'll do great. And in, and in fact, in, other pe in your relationships with other people, I feel like there's a question mark too. Uh, we have the nine of, uh, eight of pentacles, sorry, hard work. So just for now, I think like hunker down, do your work, 
and there is question marks. I don't know if it helps you, but it seems as though several signs have this hanged man energy. Hanged man is ruled by Neptune and Neptune and Jupiter will form a conjunction. There's Neptune up here in your eighth house on April 8th. That's a very significant date we'll talk about later, but for now it's, it's putting a lot of things on pause. I think it's going to be a big surprise. I think, I hope it's going to be something great. And seven of pentacles. So it's saying with regard to this Mercury ret retrograde, there may be delays. You need to get things done without knowing everything. There's, there's not all your questions are answered and you should just be okay with that. Okay. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, and members, I'm going to do the extended down below. So thank you for stopping by and I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye. Happy New Year.